Okay, I have put two cups of this flour into the bowl. I have another cup of flour on standby. You'll see why in a minute. And I also have some of the table salt. All you need is these ingredients plus water and you can make flour tortillas. So I'm just gonna salt this. I don't measure. I'm just gonna put some salt in there. You don't even technically have to put salt in these, but they taste better if you do. Give it just a little tiny stir. So the basic ratio is one cup of water for every two cups of flour. Uh, but that will vary depending on how humid it is where you're living. So I always start with one cup of water for two cups of flour plus a little extra, maybe like a quarter cup of water extra, because it's a lot easier to add flour into a dough that is too wet than it is to add water into a dough that is too dry. So this doesn't really take any special skill, you just stir it. <laughs> As you can see, this dough is quite wet. It's very sticky. If I tried to manipulate it with my hands, it would just make a big mess. That's actually what I want. So now this extra cup of flour I have, I'm gonna slowly add it until my mixture is the consistency that I want. This is one of these things you just have to kind of learn over time. And the thing about flour is it does what is called hydrating, where when you mix the flour in initially with the water, it might seem like it's too dry, but if you let it sit there for a few minutes or even longer, then the flour will take in more of that water and it will mix a little better. And then the whole mixture will be wetter than it was before. Speaking of wet, still quite sticky looking. So let's add some more. Incidentally, I'm up in Washington it's a lot more humid up here than it was uh, when I used to live in Sacramento, California. So if you're in a more arid climate, you know, Arizona, um, Central Valley of California, you know, the desert, you're going to need more water and less flour. So that's why, you know, a recipe doesn't exactly work for these because it really depends on your climate. It also depends on your flour too. Certain brands of flour um, take on more water than other brands of flour. All right, it's coming together a little bit more, but it's still quite sticky. Let's add more flour. So yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have about three cups of flour in this entire batch of dough. Again, it's one of those things, once you do it a lot, you get a lot better at it. But the first time you make it, you might be like, ah, it's not working. You just have to keep doing it. And it's okay if you mess up a batch because the flour is so ridiculously cheap, it's hardly even a waste of money. Yeah, this looks about right. So once it gets to the point where it's kind of sticking on itself in a ball and there's a lot of flour on the outsides of your bowl and then it's not really mixing very well anymore with a spoon, this is the point where you can get in with your hands. You're going to want to knead this dough eventually so it can stand up to a lot of work. And what I like to do is to kind of use the stick of this ball of dough to help release some of the flour off of the edges of the bowl. It's still quite sticky. <laughs> and take the rest of my flour. I might even wind up adding more flour. So how do you know how much dough you want to make? Uh, if you want to make little tortillas, basically, like the kind for soft tacos or to eat on the side of maybe some beans and rice or fajitas or something like that, then you want to use about a quarter cup of flour per tortilla. So this batch of dough that I'm making right now, since it's three cups, this will make 12 small tortillas. But if you want to make really big tortillas, I'm about to do that actually today uh, for like burritos, then you want about a half a cup of flour per tortilla. And you might hear me subtly huffing while I'm talking, and that's because I am kneading this dough. And it does take some work. If you ever need to take a little break, you can. You can let your dough relax for a little bit, knead it again. Yeah, this looks like it was about the right amount of flour. I could probably do with a little bit more. If there's a lot of this dough sticking to your cutting board, you need more flour. If there's just a little bit sticking to the cutting board, just kind of rub it and then incorporate that into your ball of dough. If you have flour left on your hand, 
That probably means you're not done kneading yet. It's getting to the point now though where I can kind of rub the excess flour off of my hands and incorporate it into my dough ball. It's still sticking a little bit. <laughs> And as I mentioned with hydrating earlier, this dough ball is going to get a little wetter after it has rested. So I wanna add a little more flour to it. Just a little more. So yeah, it looks like I'm doing about three and a half cups of flour total now in my dough ball. For, it was about one and a half cups of water. That's about right, because two to one would have been three cups of flour to one and a half cups of water. But since it's a little more humid up here, it's going to be more like three and a half cups of flour. Okay, another reason why I like just kind of adding the flour a little at a time as I go is doing that uh, forces me to knead my dough. You don't have to knead your dough, um, but it will have a much better texture if you knead it. It'll be kind of chewier when you're eating it and it'll, you know, tear away a little bit. You know how tortillas kind of do that? Oh, and I might as well mention, um, this tortilla recipe, uh, I learned it actually from a woman from Mexico, and she usually likes to use slightly off milk instead of water. I'm just using water, to, you know, because that's cheaper, and to show that, like, this is the absolute cheapest version you can make of this, but yeah, you can totally put milk in here instead of water. Slightly off milk is nice. That way you don't have to throw it away and waste it. And these kinds of tortillas are not the kind that you normally would buy in the store. Um, the kind you buy in the store, well, they have preservatives for one thing, but they also have uh, fat in them, like lard or something. And so they do, these tortillas, these homemade ones, do behave a bit differently from the store-bought kind. I would say generally they're, they're not as good um, cold or room temperature as store-bought tortillas are. And, they, you know, you can make the kind of tortillas uh, at home that do have lard or fat in them. That's just not this recipe. All right, so as you can see, it's come together. It, it's kind of doing this thing where not all of it is necessarily sticking to itself, but parts of it are still a little bit sticky. It's releasing quite easily from my hands. It's releasing quite easily from the board. I'm trying to make it stick and it's not sticking. So this is when you know that your dough is sufficiently um, floured. And at this point, this is probably the most important part of the process. You have to let this rest. If you try to knead it out into tortillas right now, it's going to be so tough and spring back on you, and you're not going to be able to roll them out thinly. So you have to let this rest for at least 20 minutes. And what I actually like to do is I'll make a big ball of tortilla dough like this. And since I like fresh tortillas, I don't like leftover tortillas so much, I will keep it in the fridge. And it keeps for a few days in the fridge. And I can just pull off little bits of it to make fresh tortillas as needed. Uh, but I'm going to use some of this in a couple hours to make some burritos. But got to let it rest for at least 20 minutes in the fridge. And I just recycle an old plastic bag from grocery shopping. No need to spend money on plastic wrap. And there you go, plop it in the fridge. So this is my tortilla dough. A couple days later, uh, I have since, since I made this dough, I have made a few very large tortillas from it. My husband and I had uh, burritos yesterday, and then today, just like an hour ago, I made him a couple large tortillas for more burritos. Uh, so this is like probably about half, maybe to two thirds of the dough that I originally made. Still a lot of dough, and it's fresh from the fridge, so you want to portion it off into the size of uh, tortillas you want to make. And this comes down to practice. Uh, make them smaller than you think you're going to want them. Look how big that is compared to my tiny alien hand. It's pretty small, actually. And then what I do is I take a lump of flour and I flatten it in the flour like a disc. And then you set it aside. You do not want to attempt to roll these out immediately after you've taken them out of the fridge. I also like to roll them into like nice balls. The neater you are at this stage, making them as round as you possibly can, the more likely it is that your rolled out tortillas are also going to be nice and round. So if you care about that sort of thing, I usually don't care about that sort of thing, but this is the internet, so I guess I care a little more just now. Um, if you do care about that sort of thing, uh, then pay more attention at this stage. But also resign yourself to your tortillas being misshapen the first few times you make them. It really just comes down to practice. 
Now the cool thing about this dough is you can make the dough in advance and leave the dough in your fridge raw and make fresh tortillas as needed. Uh, this one's not going to be very round. Look, it's kind of tear shaped. <laughs> It'll look more like none. Or you can do what I'm doing right now and make a bunch of tortillas in advance. Now the Mexican woman who taught me how to make tortillas this way, uh, she often will make a big batch of tortillas when she has time. She'll make like 50 and then she will freeze most of them in tin foil. And then what she does, and I, I've tried this before and I can vouch for it, it works. Just take a frozen tortilla directly from the freezer and microwave it for like 10 seconds. Uh, it depends on the strength of your microwave, of course. And it's kind of as good as new. It's like ever so slightly tougher when it's previously frozen. But generally, yeah, if you're pressed for time and you have like one free day a month <laughs> that you can make like 50 tortillas or all 75 tortillas from, from the bag of the five pound bag of flour, you can do that. Take a Sunday afternoon and just make yourself 75 tortillas for $1.39 and then freeze most of them for later. And by the time I'm finished separating my last ball of tortilla dough, the ones that I first separated will be ready to roll out. So this is kind of a good system. Okay, I have separated out all of my little tortilla babies, <laughs> ready to be rolled out. So yeah, these tortillas are actually a little less than a quarter cup of flour each, just for reference. So my little discs that I have yet to roll out, I'll just kind of pile them all on one side of the cutting board. So it's one of those things where, yeah, you do need to get yourself a cutting board, a large one like this, or just use a very clean countertop. And you do need to get yourself a rolling pin. Now, you can get this at a thrift store for really cheap, or you can use like a, a wine bottle, you know, or a soy sauce bottle. Uh, it doesn't have to be an actual rolling pin. But a rolling pin is better, I think. I don't know, a lot of people swear by wine bottles. And this is one of those things that just comes down to practice. You want to constantly be flipping and turning your tortilla and adding more flour to the surface as needed. Yeah, these are really tiny tortillas. <laughs> I usually make my tortillas too big, so I was like overcompensating and making them extra, extra small. But that's okay. I mean for these more to just be like a tortilla you have on the side with your food rather than a tortilla that you use to wrap up stuff. So there, there's my first little tortilla baby. You can see it's about the size of a tiny alien hand. And I'm just going to put them on this uh, Tupperware lid. So again, if you want your tortillas to be as round as possible, uh, starting with a very round disc to begin with is really important, and then uh, applying even pressure as you roll. I've found, at least with my tortillas, that I tend to have them too thick around the edges and too thin around the center. So just kind of be aware. And if you really, really care about how round they are, just be very patient and go slowly. <laughs> Well, 18 more to go. Okay, so I rolled out all. So to cook the tortillas, I have just this large nonstick skillet. It's actually an old nonstick skillet. A lot of the Teflon's worn off by now. Doesn't matter. You don't need a super high quality pan to make these. I do have, which is preferable, a cast iron skillet, but I just seasoned this and I don't want to ruin it with flour. It doesn't ruin it. You just have to like re-season it again after you've coated flour tortillas on it. So I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use this cheap old uh, nonstick skillet instead. So I'm just bringing it to temperature. You want it to be quite hot. These tortillas are going to cook like 30 seconds per side. That's how quickly they go. And you don't want your tortillas to dry out uh, while you're cooking them. So I have just here a plate, and then this is just an old cut up tank top. This is just flour. <laughs> it's not dirty, I swear. And yeah, after I cook each tortilla, I'm gonna put it down here and then cover it so that it will steam and not dry out and get crackly. So before you put your tortilla down, make sure that there's no like residual flour on it. I just kind of give it a good brush with my hands on both sides just to get any excess flour off of it. Do you love daddy? Okay, this is tortilla number four. Pan is just about hot enough by now. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's already starting to bump up and a lot of bubbles are forming. 
If your pan is too cold, there's the danger of uh, your tortillas drying out. And look at that puffing up. I hope you can see that. Woo, it's an alien tortilla. And I'm gonna add it to the stack and cover it up so it won't dry out. Repeat 16 more times. So two times I meant to mention this and forgot, so I'm just gonna mention it while I'm cooking. This is what, tortilla number 10, I think, about that. Anyway, I'm just gonna mention it while I'm cooking up the rest of these tortillas. Um, I've been asked a few times by a few different people about making these flour tortillas with gluten-free flour. And do not uh, follow the recipe if you're using gluten-free instead of bread flour or all-purpose flour. It will not work the same way. Um, basically, if you're using gluten-free flour, the best way to make your own homemade tortillas is to make them the same way that you would make corn tortillas, which is a whole different uh, technique and process. And I'll probably do a video just devoted to those tortillas in the future, but for the time being, I have... Um, I do show the method of doing that in my fish tacos video. I make my corn tortillas from scratch in that video, so you can check that out in the meantime if you want to know how to make uh, corn tortillas, because corn tortillas use masa, which is a gluten-free flour. And I figure the technique for gluten-free uh, tortillas with gluten-free flours would be similar because it hydrates differently, so the ratios are gonna be different from this tortilla recipe, and you can't roll them out like you can roll out these tortillas. These have gluten, that's why you can roll them out, they spring, uh, but any gluten-free flour, if you try to roll it out, it just does not work. You have to use a tortilla press, uh, or if you don't know if you want to invest in a tortilla press, as I was for a while, you can use your butt and uh, a couple giant dictionaries, and that also works pretty well. See, now that the pan is super hot, these tortillas cook up really super quick. It's like less than 30 seconds per side. Whoa, that one messed up. That's okay. If you're fast, you can just kind of fix it. And that's a very uniquely shaped one. It looks kind of like a skull, actually. <laughs> that's morbid. Just put like an eye here and an eye there and like the nose there and it looks like a skull. <laughs> That would be really morbid if, like, I got brown marks there. Nope, I didn't get brown marks there. What do you have to say? <laughs> and behold, their cheap homemade tortilla full goodness. This whole stack of 20 tortillas probably cost me about 25 cents to make. <laughs>